Welcome to the house of hypertrophy. How many sets do you need to optimize hypertrophy? There's somewhat been a resurgence of HIIT training, with its proponents believing lower sets could be superior. However, others stand by the belief higher sets are the path to maximal gains. In this video, we'll be critically breaking down the overall scientific research on how many sets may be needed to build muscle effectively. Before diving in, know that we'll be exploring how many sets per week you may want to be performing per muscle. So if you perform three sets of squats on Monday, 3 sets on the leg press on Wednesday, and 3 sets on the leg extension on Friday. That's 9 weekly sets for the quads. In all the studies, each set is repetitions performed at least 3 reps away from failure, which as detailed in the previous video is virtually ideal for hypertrophy. Warm-up sets are not included in these weekly set counts. Let's dive in. This meta-analysis published in 2017 combined the results of all the studies at that time, finding performing 9 or more weekly sets per muscle produced greater muscle gains than fewer than 9 sets. The researchers also split the numbers like this, indicating that 10 or more weekly sets per muscle produced greater gains than 5 to 9 and fewer than 5 weekly sets per muscle. It may be worth emphasizing although higher sets built more muscle, the lower numbers still produced respectable gains. There are two considerations to this meta-analysis. The majority of studies involved untrained subjects and did not involve more than 12 weekly sets. This raises the question, what about trained individuals performing more than 12 weekly sets per muscle? A 2022 meta-analysis helps us out. Based on the available data, they were able to compare how untrained individuals, moderate volumes, defined as 12 to 20 weekly sets per muscle, compared to higher volumes, defined as more than 20 weekly sets per muscle, for biceps, triceps, and quadriceps growth. For both the biceps and quadriceps, there was no significant difference in gains between moderate and higher volumes, but for the triceps, higher volumes did produce superior growth. At face value, these results indicate between 12 to 20 weekly sets may be sufficient to maximize biceps and quad growth in trained individuals, while more than 20 weekly sets may be needed for the triceps. However, I believe there's an important limitation to this meta-analysis. The researchers combined studies using shorter and longer rest durations between sets, which might not truly be appropriate. Why? Longer rests might make each set more effective for building muscle, meaning fewer sets are needed to optimize gains. Illustrating this concept, this paper found when performing three sets on the leg press, quad hypertrophy was better when resting for three minutes between sets compared to one. However, performing five sets with one minute of rest produced similar quad hypertrophy to the three sets with three minutes of rest. Therefore, short rests appear to make each set less effective, perhaps meaning a higher number of sets may be required to optimize gains. Indeed, when analyzing the studies using short rest intervals, they all find more sets produced more growth, up to quite high 30 to 45 weekly sets per muscle. It's worth noting all three studies had subjects divide these sets across three days per week. We need to mention both compound and isolation exercises contributed to these sets. That is, one set on the bench press was treated as one set for the triceps in the same way that one set on triceps pushdowns would. Likewise, one set on the row was treated as one set for the biceps in the same way that one set on curls would. The Schoenfeld study actually just had compound exercises for the biceps and triceps, while for the other two studies, in blue are the weekly set numbers from isolation exercises for the biceps and triceps. Moving forward to studies that have used longer rests between sets, as longer rests may make each set more effective, we may hypothesize that higher sets aren't necessarily needed. Indeed, all three studies find growth was optimized in the 12 to 18 weekly set per muscle range, with no clear benefit to more. It's worth noting all three studies had subjects divide these sets mainly across two days per week. Again, this data counts both compound and isolation movements. Here are the set numbers in blue if we just counted isolation sets for the triceps and biceps. Before discussing individual differences, let's sum up some of what we've covered with additional key points. If you're using short rest between sets, very high set numbers may optimize gains, but the sustainability and practicality of this long term is questionable. All three studies mentioned all subjects perform their sets to momentary muscular failure, and I know there are some people who are skeptical of this. Truthfully, I don't know if all subjects did this, 
and it could have varied across subjects. What I do know is that in practice, training with the necessary proximity to failure is much more challenging when using short rest with a high number of sets, especially with lower body exercises. The cardio challenge may mask and impair your ability to get close enough to true failure. Furthermore, I would like to bring up this study. It had trained individuals train the biceps and triceps with quite high volumes, 28 weekly sets for each muscle from isolation exercises, and 46 weekly sets if we included the compound exercises. Short rests were also used. One group actually stretched between sets of the first and final exercises in a session, while the second group rested normally. Here are some graphs depicting how each individual grew their arm muscles in both groups. There were some cases of people growing well, but there were a number of cases of people experiencing very little gains, including cases of some people decreasing their size potentially due to excessive muscle damage. This study didn't have any other groups performing different set numbers, but I bring it up to demonstrate not everyone experiences positive gains from very high sets and short rests. Moving on, we know in studies using longer rest between sets, there's no clear benefit to more than 18 weekly sets per muscle, and even 12 weekly sets were sufficient for quad gains in one study. However, we've just been speaking about the average results from the studies, but luckily some of them provide individual data. Here's how each individual in each group in the Schoenfeld study grew, which was one of the papers finding more average growth from more sets with short rests between sets. Some trained individuals still saw respectable hypertrophy with the lowest set numbers. In fact, some subjects in the lowest set number group saw similar or more gains to others in the higher set groups. Here's how each individual in each group grew in the Hazel Grave study, which was one of the papers finding biceps hypertrophy was best with 18 weekly sets when longer rests were used. Again, some trained individuals still saw respectable hypertrophy with the lowest set numbers, with some subjects in the lowest set group growing similar or more versus the higher set groups. Now, this data does not necessarily prove these subjects grow best from lower set numbers, because if these subjects were in the higher set groups they could have grown even more. Fortunately though, some clever study designs can tell us if some people grow more from lower set numbers, or vice versa. 3 Studies Provide Insight This recent study by Van Vossel was actually analysed in our last video. It had 21 untrained men perform 6-8 to eight weekly sets per muscle with one side of their body, but 9-12 to 12 weekly sets per muscle with their other side of their body. Average quad, hamstrings, biceps and triceps growth was superior with the 9-12 to 12 weekly sets, and actually the large bulk of individuals aligned with the average, seeing more growth from the 9-12 to 12 weekly sets. There were only a few cases of similar gains between both and even few fewer cases of better gains with the 6-8 to eight weekly sets. However, another study by Damas had 19 untrained men perform 6-9 to nine weekly sets for the quads with one leg, and 15 weekly sets for the quads with the other leg. The results of this study were a little more mixed. Around 32% of subjects grew better with the 15 weekly sets, another 32% better with the 6-9 to nine weekly sets, while the remaining 36% experienced similar hypertrophy between both. Finally, a Norwegian study had 34 untrained individuals perform 6 weekly sets for the quads with one leg, and another leg perform 18 weekly sets for the quads. 13 individuals saw a clear benefit from their 18 weekly sets, while 3 individuals saw a clear benefit from the 6 weekly sets, the rest saw fairly similar hypertrophy between both. Collectively considering this data, some degree of individual differences appears to exist. Certain individuals may not always see additional benefits to higher set numbers. There are some caveats with this data. Firstly, the Van Vossel and Damas papers also involved different training frequencies. Secondly, all three studies involved untrained individuals, but I'm unaware of any strong reason to believe this concept wouldn't extend to trained individuals. It's currently not clear why some may grow more from lower or higher sets, and there's no established method you can use to know what you may respond best to, at least yet. I would just keep this information at the back of your mind. If you're really struggling to make progress with your current program, you could try lower or higher sets depending on your preference and perception. Speaking of progress, tracking your own training progress over the long term can be very useful. Our high quality partner, the Alpha Progression app, can save you time by automatically generating graphs that track your progression with all areas of your program, which could help you understand what may work best for you. Some of you might also find it confusing and challenging to create a training program, and I'm glad to say the app has a seriously impressive custom workout generator that can tailor an evidence-based program to your precise desires and needs in less 
than one minute. There are more than a quadrillion input combinations on which your plan is based. With the touch of a few buttons, you can customize things further like changing set numbers. There's also a huge exercise database with concise text and video instructions on each. Try everything out free for two weeks with a link in the comments and description. And if you like it and decide to go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. The app is truly top tier, with a review speaking to this. In summary, we saw this 2017 meta-analysis finding that 9 or more weekly sets per muscle led to greater gains than fewer sets. The majority of the data behind this was conducted on untrained individuals and did not exceed 12 weekly sets. And I do think 9 to 12 weekly sets per muscle is a solid recommendation for beginners. With trained individuals, assuming longer rests between sets are used, the current data indicates there's no clear benefit to performing more than 18 weekly sets per muscle, and even 12 weekly sets were sufficient sufficient for quad gains in one study. All of these are averages, which are solid general guidelines. However, there is some data pointing towards individual differences. Some people may grow more with higher or lower sets. As a result, if these average values don't work for you, one tool in your toolbox is to try reducing or increasing sets depending on your preference and perception. Finally, you may be wondering about gradually adding sets across weeks. A recent study has examined this, and it's caused quite a stir across social media, mainly as it involved the highest set numbers reported in the literature to date. In the next video at the House of Hypertrophy, we'll be deciphering this paper and its potential takeaways.